if troops aren't the answer, and, and I'm, I'm with you that they're not because we're declaring war on everything and it's not working, uh, what is the right answer? How do we get Al-Qaeda and Taliban suppressed in Afghanistan and to some degree in Pakistan, or to a large degree in Pakistan? Well, I think it's, I think it's wicked complicated, and I actually do think that troops are part of the solution. But, I mean, when you're fighting, essentially we're fighting for Afghanistan to become a normal country. We'd like Afghanistan to not be a failed state. We'd like it to be a place that actually had a functioning government. And so if that's the goal, then you know, sending in, sending in more troops or having foreign troops there to the extent that they can provide actual security, not as a, not, not as a euphemism for something else, but literally that they can provide a safe environment for the population in Afghanistan, that's gonna help. But the more troops there are, the more that the Afghan people feel that they are either gonna bear civilian casualties uh, because of the presence of our troops or that they're just being occupied by a foreign power like they have been for generations, the more they're going to support anybody who seems homegrown and doesn't seem to be part of this uh, hand-picked American-supported government in Kabul that they don't really trust that feels like part of the problem and not the solution to them. I mean, I feel like, honestly, if we, in this new globalized world that we live in, you know, it's been a long time since the Berlin Wall fell. It's been a long time, frankly, since the Twin Towers fell. If we really, really want to achieve what we all agree is the American objective with Afghanistan, that nobody plans another 9-11 from there again, we're talking about... You know, we're talking about a long commitment in which troops are only a very small part of it. I'll tell you, Barry McCaffrey just came back uh, from Afghanistan, and what he's suggesting, he talked to Joe Galloway about this yesterday at McClatchy, is a quarter century of nation building, road and bridge building, the building of a better trained and better armed Afghan national police and national army, and the eradication of the opium farming industry. And, and, and the, obviously the creation of a functioning government in Afghanistan. Yeah, our troops can be a small part of that, but that involves nation building with every form of American power. And, you know, two brigades, not going to make a difference. Uh, Rachel, I was just checking out the live blog, and Unholy Peanut said almost the same exact thing you did and asked the question, how long can we possibly stay there to make this thing work? And if we're not going to stay that long, then what is the, the right answer? But along those lines, Teddy Partridge also asked on the live blog, I would like to know where Barack Obama plans to get the two or three brigades he and John McCain now want to send to Afghanistan. Aren't our forces stretched thin and overburdened in Iraq? Wasn't the idea of leaving Iraq to bring our troops home? And will this mean even longer commitments for our Guard and Reserve troops and their families? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the predicate, of, um, the predicate of, of Obama's assertion about the two brigades, uh, and actually, ironically and crazily, uh, under, under McCain's assertion that he'd send three brigades, is that they, these, guys, these brigades would be coming home from um, Iraq. And that's way too simple. And in the case of McCain, it's ridiculous, given that he thinks that us winning in Iraq gives us the opportunity to be there for 100 years. Um, but that's that idea that, that the some, he's easing up some of the military burden in Iraq to go to Afghanistan. As I say, it's oversimplified, but that's what they are claiming. I, I think that there is something important, though, for liberals and progressives and Democrats and even centrists to get about how to talk about this. And that is that staying doesn't necessarily just mean we have a military occupation in place. Like maybe we need to be engaged in some hopefully constructive fashion in Afghanistan for a generation. But maybe the, the idea is that we have to figure out how to do economic development and road and bridge building there. And we need enough security to be able to do that safely. But the whole point is to build Afghanistan into a working state. Having a foreign occupying army there only gets us a very small part of the way there and has a lot of blowback implications. We have to be engaged with them in a way that involves a lot of other forms of American power besides our military. All right, Rachel Maddow of uh, Air America and MSNBC, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it, Rachel. It's been fun. Thanks, you guys. All right. Uh, and, David, I want to thank you for coming in as well. No really problem. appreciate that. All right, guys, and I want to thank you guys for helping uh, put the show on. If you don't know, uh, your donations make this show possible, and we appreciate all of them. Uh, and we're going to take a real quick break and then come back and talk about these same issues with our panel of bloggers when we meet the bloggers. We'll be right back.